Let us put ourselves in the holy presence of the Lord as we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At the Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, I praise you, I thank you, and I worship you, Lord Jesus. I thank you for all the blessings you have given me. I surrender my intellect, my mind, and my memory into your hands. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, send the Holy Spirit upon me. O oh, Holy Spirit, come into my heart, come into my mind, come into my intellect, to enlighten me, so that I may study well. Holy Spirit, my helper, fill me with your wisdom, knowledge and understanding. Spirit of Jesus, give me good memory so that I might be able to understand and remember what I am going to study now. O oh Holy Spirit, I need you, come into me. Thank you, Father. Thank Hello, grade 8 students. Welcome back to Carmel Academy School Year 2021 to 2022. I am Miss Angelica Tarek, your subject teacher in Delhi. And we will be talking about food and beverage services. Food and beverage services defined as the process of preparing, presenting, and serving of food and beverage to the customers. For our objectives, at the end of the lesson, you are expected to explain the concepts and principles in providing a link between the kitchen and service areas. Discuss precautionary measures and observance of hygiene and sanitation in food and beverage handling. Enumerate the duties and responsibilities of the food service personnel and cite the importance of communication and interpersonal skills between and among food service personnel. Presenting food and beverage services, it is important to add design of fruit and vegetables which is simple and pleasant that will bring elegance to your meals and to your table. And it is fun and enjoyable to add a decorative touch with napkin folding and table decorations and accessories bring extra decorations to the table. In an organization like a food service, communication and interpersonal skills are utmost importance for smooth well-coordinated and efficient operation of the food service. Communication is the act of imparting or relaying messages or information to one or more persons. It can be one-way communication. It can also be a two-way communication. It can be direct communication and it can also be an indirect communication. When we say one-way communication, it is when a person sends a message to another person and receives no feedback of any kind from the receiver. So, the person gives instructions or directions through memo or email. So, one-way communication example is kanang naay nagdiscuss or nagbasa lang ka nagtanaw lang ka sa mga print or nagwatch ka og TV so you play the role as the receiver and your sender dili siya maka receive og feedback nimo kay maski pag nagtanaw ka og TV then mo react ka sa TV dili na pasabot nga 
two-way communication na tungod kay walay ma-receive ang sender ni mo nga ikaw ang receiver. Another example is YouTube. So, nagtanaw ka o YouTube. And then, um, ning-react ka sa YouTube. So, wala. Walay ma-receive si um, sender. So, you will be the receiver. Ang nahitabo dito, it's only a one-way communication. So, ang atua lang hinumduman kung may inguntag one-way communication is that um, no conversation nga mahitabo, no feedbacks nga ma-receive si sender. When we say two-way communication, it is wherein one person responds or sends back the message to the other person. So, ang isa ka tao nag, nag-send bitaw siya o ka ng information or na siya gisend nga message. So, the receiver will respond to that sender. Na siya i-respond sa sender. Na siya feedback sa sender. Example, Ana, is direct nga nag no nag mo. Then, another example is na akay katawag sa telephone or na akay ka ka video call so basta kay na ay conversation nga mahitabo okay next is direct communication so when we say direct communication it can be verbal which is done by talking directly to the employees concerned or those who will be affected by the decision so kung may direct communication kanang kuana siya through verbal or kanang ang iyahang gi, gi storya or the message is na siya clear nga thought or direct action clear understanding so need ni siya sa workplace nga naman kung yung mag direct communication example ana is ako kitahay ang boss then gusto ko nga dili ka magsigig ka late so direct ko mo ingon ni mo nga ayaw sigig ka late dapat 8 mo in na ka. Direct communication. Kanang prank ka ba? So, um, nasa siya disadvantage, no? Kamara, mahug siya nga. Harsh ba? Or something. Pero, kung ato siyang, ato siyang tanawon nito, ah, uh, in advantage side, sa iyahang kaayuhan, it is, kanang nunid na nga, magunahuna, pagkag haon sa may boot, ipasabuti eh, atong iyahang giingon. So, direct na ang iyahang giingon. So, clear understanding and clear direct action. Now, let's talk about indirect communication. So, when we say indirect communication can be in writing or that is through memo and directed to the employee's concern. So, indirect communication, it is acting out rather than directly saying what a person is thinking or Feeling. So, using facial expressions, tone of voice, or gestures. And direct communication means, kanang, mo to siya, kung example sa direct, no nga, mo, mo direct kag-ingon sa imuhang tuyo. So, binali sa indirect is na ka iingon pero dili siya clearly nga thought, dili siya clear understanding da yun. So, you need pa nga magunahuna nga, ha, on sa debut, pasabot, at to, ha, on sa di ay na, on, na, kanang dapat ba ko, or katabi nga, on, dapat dili malay. So, on sa may boot, pasabot, dapat ba advance ko 30 minutes, or dapat ba nga, on time ra kumunguan. So, dagahan, dili siya clear nga, dili siya direct to the point ba ang iyahang thought indirect communication. So, isa po dad to, kanang padadaan lang kag memo or padadaan lang kag suwat. So, indirect communication. So, effective communication requires good interpersonal relations. And good interpersonal relations means in the food service, get along well. So, dapat sakto kag tagad sa tanan ni mo nga katrabaho. Each employee, whatever his or her possession in the organization, behaves in accordance to the rules and policies of the organization and is committed by its vision and mission. So, friendly yet professional para harmonious ang atuang workplace. 
There are other techniques to establish good relations with the employers and employees. And this technique is known as positive reinforcement. So what is this positive reinforcement? It is based on the assumption that human behavior is determined by responses to stimuli or environmental conditions and a person's behavior can be changed by changing the environment to which the person responds. So can it be I see positive reinforcement? It will help increase positive behavior. So there are two types of reinforcement. Gitawag na siya og tangible reinforcement and intangible reinforcement. When we say tangible reinforcement, mga mga tangible ma, dawat na to, bonus or prize, mga premium or rewards. No, rewards nga ato mahikam. So, tangible. Ma, ma, madawat na to. While, intangible reinforcement, ang atong madawat ana are praises or words of appreciation. So, mga encouragement or motivation gikan sa ato ang mga um, head para sa ginahan tamo trabaho, no? Motivated kaayo. Samot nag-tangible reinforcement. <laughs> now, let's move on to duties and responsibilities of the food service personnel. Duties are tasks assigned to every member of the food service team in accordance to the position he or she occupies. So, together with the duties are responsibilities. So, he or she is accountable for finishing every task in accordance to industry standards. Duties, task nga imuhang gi-assign. Responsibilities, imuhang mga account, accountable nga dapat jud ni mo humanon ka ng task nga imuhang nga ilang gihatag ni mo. So, mo na imuhang responsibility. Ang duty ni mo katong mga task nga imuhang gamon. Specific jobs require specific duties and responsibilities. In turn, this requires personnel with specific qualifications to do the job effectively and efficiently. So, para ma, ma ka na execute ni mo tarong o effectively ang imuhang ang task nga gi-assign, dapat mo fit siya kung unsa imuhang job description. So, example, um, kanang tigugas kag plato mo na imuha then gipaluto ka or kanang you are a waiter unya gipaluto ka so dili jud nimo ma work madu ang imuhang job effectively and efficiently kay dili man mao ang imuhang job description so mo na giingon nato nga ang specific job nag require siya og specific duties and responsibilities so, the following are the various personnel in the food service establishment. First, we have the manager. The manager is the overall in charge of the operations of the establishment. He or she should be meticulous about cleanliness, prompt service, good quality food, and cost-saving techniques. So, si manager... Mo siya ang kanang overall nga magmanage sa negosyo. So, successful kanang manager inspires confidence in their subordinates and also make the subordinate aware that they have confidence in them. So, kung ikaw ang manager, dapat po if feel ni mo sa imuhang mga subordinate or sa imuhang mga kauban nga kanang salig ka nila, nga kaya na nila, no, na kay confidence nila. Good managers also try to consistent in their behavior and in enforcing rules and policies. So, as the manager or as the head, dapat ka nang naakay mga rules and policies nga giset ana nga establishment. Nothing upsets to organization that more than a manager whose behavior is difficult to predict and easy to deal. So, kita hay karong adlawa kay Mark. Ola, ko lagi ko ayo si kanang si manager. So, dapat in the next easy deal ra ba? Dapat in the next day difficult to deal na sad kanang dapat dili nila mabasa ang imuhang lihok. So, dapat ingana ba? Dili ka isi-isihon. So, si manager sad ang mag 
plano sa mga special nga menu for special occasions, uh, magplano sa sa mga special promotions or sales at a certain season sa occasions in a year. Kani bitang mag-sale no or naay mga discount. Then uh, mag-make sure siya og studies nga para mahibaw niya ang unsay mga trending karong panahon na. So Sa pa may uban niya ang buhaton, magplano siya sa mga karaadlaw nga gimbuhaton. Tanawon niya ang kahinloon sa kusina, sa dining area, sa tanan nga area, sa establishment. Then, ikontrol sa niya ang um, the food staff and their proper preparation and storage. So, ang iyahang assistant ana katong purchaser o si store room. Sa pa may uban niya ang buhaton, mang-contact siya og mga person nga mo-promote ana nga establishment o mo-advertise ana nga establishment then di sad malimtan mag regular daily weekly or monthly report on the status of the business sa tag-iya okay so grabe kadaghan og trabaho si manager pero nana siya ay assistant manager the supervisor so the supervisor helps the manager in directing controlling and supervising personnel in the day-to-day operations so when the manager is not around the assistant manager takes over the responsibility of overseeing the activities of the establishment so kung tingbisi na magmonitor si supervisor sa para ma-ensure niya nga efficient pick up of the food items so samot nag kanang peak hours so muna ay buhat ni supervisor dapat sad siya well trained pareha ni manager next we have the chef cook the chef cook must possess competence skill and adequate experiences in preparing and cooking a variety of menus that would meet the needs and desires of the customers. So when he or she identifies traditional items required in the kitchen, the chef cook advise other cooks promptly on readiness of items to be served. So dapat yun, kinang, kinang, kuan ba, dili, bitaw, dugay ka, ayaw nga serve, no? Kay, nga naman, maglagot ba yun ng customers na na? And then, he or she, checks the quality of food cooked according to customer's request. By the, by the help of the assistant cook, the assistant cook helps the chef cook in preparing and cooking the specific food ordered by customers. Just like the chef cook, he or she must competent and knowledgeable in food preparation. The assistant cook must be patient, resourceful, and has initiative in doing the job. He or she must be healthy, relatively young of age, to endure the long hours of work in the kitchen. Next is the purchaser. The purchaser is the one who purchases all the materials and supplies needed by the kitchen, the dining room, and the other service areas. A purchaser prepares the market list once or twice a week depending on how often purchasing is done. He or she observes market conditions and schedules what to buy and when to buy in volume at the lowest price possible. Kung mahimo, barato nga mga pamaliton. Okay. A purchaser checks incoming material and supplies as to quality, weights, and specifications and reject those which do not meet specified requirements of the food service. So, iyahang bantayan ang market condition, mag-schedule siya, kanus siya mamalit, no, kung mahimo, ting barato, barato, pero quality. Then, i-check sad niya ang mga muabot niya mga supplies, then ipang-reject niya ang mga wala mo meet sa ilahang standard. By the help of this storeroom keeper, they arrange the incoming materials and supplies and double-check their specification. 
this person also makes daily report of incoming and outgoing materials and supplies. So, I arrange niya ang tanang moabot ng mga materials and supplies. Then, magamashag inventory, iyahang i-report ni purchaser. So, ang report niya karaadlaw sa incoming o outgoing ng mga materials or supplies. So, tanan nga musulod o magawas, iyahan ng gamaan o report. Asa man niya ihatag ang iyong report? Add to ni purchaser. Next, counter girls and waitress. So, these employees take charge of receiving orders, delivery of the food on the table of the customers, clearing up, and other tasks related to food service. They constantly check service wear, then they should carry plates or trays safely and transfer plates with food safely and properly on the dining table. They should be highly trained and they should be physically and mentally healthy. They should have a pleasing personality and have a good command of language, tolerant, know how to deal with the customers in a professional manner, and have a good, knowledgeable of the different dishes offered by the food establishment. So, muna trabaho sa mga counter girls of sa waitress. Sila ang mag kanang maghatag sa food sa customer. So, dapat they should carry their trays safely kay basig mayabuan si customer. They should kanang mag uh, i-greet nila si customer. They should be physically and mentally healthy. So, dapat sa dun sa to, na asilay pleasing personality. Na asilay kanang kibaw sila mudil sa customer in a professional manner. Next, cashier. A cashier holds the sensitive position of handling the cash collected daily. This person should know how to operate a cash register or any type of machine intended for the activity. He or she prepares the daily, weekly, and monthly financial reports. Next, we have other employees. The dishwasher and the sanitation personnel do not need to have a high education qualifications. The important consideration is that they are highly trained for the job, which means that they possess the skill for the job and have a good attitude toward their work. So, wala nag need of high quality education or high educational background. Si other employees ka ng tiglim, tiglimpyo or tig hugas o plato. Ang sa may importante nila, dapat lang naka-highly trained sila ana nga trabaho. Which is kugihan, no? Then, dilisad kalimtan o saktog pamatasan. Our next topic is all about cleaning and clearing the food service areas. Cleaning and sanitizing are procedures in any food service operation that require time, labor, energy, and chemicals. Proper and thorough cleaning and sanitizing in a food service results in a maximum protection of employees and customers. Cleaning is a two-step process that occurs when a cleaning agent like a detergent is put in contact with a soiled surface. So, sa may mga gamiton kung cleaning ang atong hisgutan? Detergent, brush, scrub, soap, and water. So, cleaning lang, mang limpyo. Sabunan, brushan, kuskuson, then, dili kalimtan ang tubig. Pero kung may ngunta o sanitizing, Sanitizing is done immediately after cleaning. So, after ka mang limpyo, isunod na yun si sanitizing. All food contact surfaces must be sanitized to lower the presence of harmful microorganisms to safe levels. So, these contact surfaces include the use of the dinerware, flatware, beverageware, equipment, 
and work surfaces in the kitchen. So, na two types of sanitizing. The heat sanitizing and the chemical sanitizing. So, kung yung kag heat sanitizing, this is exposing the surfaces to a high heat long enough to kill harmful microorganism. So, kana lang kaysa galan nga gibuhat bito na to sa ato ah, pag sanitize sa ato ang mga kitchen utensils. Kanang magpabukal taog, ininit. Then, ato ah siyang iluno dito, no, ihumol ang ato ang mga gamit sa ininit na tubig. Next is chemical sanitizing. This is sanitizing through the use of chemicals. One of the reason for choosing this method over the heat sanitizing is kanang less siya og energy work. Kaya nga naman, gamit na lang man mo og chemical. Di parihan ni heat sanitizing nga magmanual bitaw ka og sanitize, pag-init pa ka. So, imuha pa tong i-sanitize, imuhang mga utensils. Unlike ni chemical sanitizing nga, dali ra siya. Spray spray lang, no? Chemical sanitizing also, gamitong siya sa mga lugar, kanamit ang mga lugar nga, ay, kung nag imuhang initan o tubig, tanas yung imuhang um, lugar sa sa imuhang establishment, sa mot na sa kitchen. So, munang gamit sa si chemical um, sanitizing kay pang sprayhan na lang nimo dali ra kaayo. Our next topic is all about precautionary and sanitary practices in handling food and beverage. Every food service operator bears the responsibility of protecting the health of patrons and employees against infections and diseases caused by lack of adequate sanitation in the food service. First, we have employee health and personal hygiene attire. First is health examination. Employees involved in food handling should undergo health examination before being hired and at a routine interval such as every year or every six months thereafter. So, magpa-check up sa mga tatong naghandle dog food every year or every six months magpa-check up. Next to health examination is proper attire. Proper attire includes wearing of clean, washable clothing. Employees' clean aprons are essential and hair restraints, as a my example, hairnet, bonnet, or cups. Employees prevent hair from falling into the food and to discourage the food handlers from touching their hair. For, sorry for the um, typo error. Pero masabda naman siya. Okay. So, proper attire. When you are anang, when you are serving food, no? Food services. Dapat jud naka-apron, naka-hairnet, or naka-bonnet, or naka-cups para ma-prevent ang mga mahagbo nga mga buho. Then, uh, more siya mm, ma-discourage ang atong self na magsigitag hikam sa ato ang buhok, which is not good when you are handling food items. Okay? So, proper attire. So, mag, mag apron, then dapat sa knit ka tanawon. Number two, hand washing habits. The hand is the most significant agent that causes the spread of foodborne microorganisms. Because of this, employees involved in the production of food in the kitchen and the service of food in the dining area should strictly observe proper hand washing whenever and wherever needed. And here are the occasions where proper hand washing is a must. Example, when starting to work in the kitchen and dining area, before kamu work, maghugas ka og kamot. When returning to work after a break, gikan ka nag break time, mubalik ka og work, panghugas ka og kamot. When handling raw food materials, example, itlog, mga karni, gulay, so, manghugas og kamot. When treating a cut or wound, kitahin na samad ka after ka mag-treat sa imuhang samad, 
manghugas o kamot. Wind coughing or sneezing. Nag-ubo ka, nag, nag, na, nang hatsi ka, manghugas ka o kamot. Handling waste, both human and material. Gikan ba ka nag-CR or gikan ka ng limpyo, manghugas o kamot. When using tools, utensils and equipment. Magamit ka sa mga utensils, mga gamit sa kitchen, manghugas o kamot. Or bisag unsa pay imong buhaton when it is necessary to wash your hand, wash your hand. Number three, other personal hygiene habits. Trim and clean fingernails regularly. So, mang nail cutter, dapat dili mag taas-taas og kuko, dili mag color-color og kuko, samot na kung naghandle ka og food. So, Use a hair restraint katong mag hairnet, nakabonet or nakaheadband or anything nga makakip sa imuhang hair para ma-prevent ang buhok nga mga hagbong sa foods. Next, wear a mask. So samot na karon in our new normal, dapat ka mag-wear always sa mask. Maski pag naka sa kitchen, samot na kung makaubo ka or gisipon ka, so mag-mask ka kapunay. Next, Wear a disposable gloves. So, magamit ka og mga disposable gloves kung naghandle ka og food. Do not allow an authorized person inside the food production area to minimize the kanang the spread of the bacteria and other harmful microorganisms carried by individuals. So, dili magpasod og mga unauthorized person inside the food production area. Number four, cuts, abrasions, and employee illness. Cover with waterproof bandage all cuts and abrasions. Workers with colds or sore throat should be temporarily prohibited from working as food handlers. Those suffering with communicable diseases should rest and come back when completely cured. Our next topic is all about Safety in Food Service Accident prevention and safety education are standard procedures in food service institutions. And here are some guidelines in making food service safe. Okay, first, ensure safety of the physical structures and equipment in the food service. Next, Train workers on safe work practice. Prevent slippery floors caused by careless spillage of liquids from receptacles or containers or dropping of slippery bits of food on the floor. Maintain orderliness at all times. A place for everything and everything in its place. Conformance with the fire prevention and safety regulations for safety at all times. So, balik na sa number 2. Train workers on safe work practice. Kung may tag-train workers, di ba, in every job description, they should be highly trained. So, nga naman, ang sabay mahita bo kung wala di ay ka matrain. Kung example storeroom keeper ka, di ba, mamusat ka sa mga incoming, uh, incoming nga mga uh, equipments or kanyang mga gipang compra kanyang high gipang new purchased so kung tig nagbusat ka dito bugat then wala ni mo na maoog position ang imuhang lawas manakit ang imuhang likod or ma- maunsa pa na imuhang mga kabukugan dira so mo nang dapat naka well trained ang ato ang mga trabahante example nang hipos og tray wala nagtanaw sa iyang hangitanawan nakabangga mhm hagbong ang mga gipang bitbit. Malas pa kung makaigo ka og customer. Another happen is kaya mga posibleng, posibleng mahitabo kung dili ka magbantay is kaya bitang magbusat ka then kaya wala ka kaya na ay mga wala mahinlo. Kaya bita na prevent slippery floor samot na katong mga na curlers nga nayabong nga mga liquid sa sa wog. So mas slide ang waiter Mayabo ang gidala, malas ko, makaigo pa ka og customer. Then, other 
other situation nga dapat bantayan is the overloading trays. Kaya nang maski pag puno ng imuhang tray, imo yung pugsun o hipos nga madatanan. So, ang tendency na mga yabo, mga hagbong, no, kay naka-overload mo dahil ang uban nga mga gamit sa so, mga buak. So, dapat jod naka-train tarong ang atuang workers. Watch these videos for more clarifications in our discussion. And here are some examples also happens in food and beverage services. Hi, my name is Diana Chen and I'm a pediatric pulmonologist at UCLA. One of the most common questions I get from my patients is, how do I keep my kids from getting sick? Now the number one prevention in preventing spread of germs or colds is good hand hygiene. What I mean is you want to wash your hands frequently and correctly. Now there are five steps to good hand washing. First, step one is you want to wash the palm of your hands with soap or an alcohol-based rub. Step two is washing the back of your hands. Step three is making sure you get in between your fingers. Step four, making sure you wash the tips of your fingers. And step five is making sure you get your thumbs. Germs are spread by dirty hands, so practicing good hand hygiene, washing your hands frequently and correctly can prevent the spread of germs and colds in your household. Duties and Responsibilities My dear students, we have to know our duties and responsibilities in life. If you are responsible, you will become a role model. You will improve in your decision making and you will be more confident. And how does duties important in our life? Try to imagine that you are part of a bigger picture. Ako nga picture. 
Pero dili ikaw ang whole picture. You are just part. You are just a small piece. Pero, importante ka nga piece. So, try na mo huwag nakasolve huwag puzzle. No? Dili ikaw ang tibuok puzzle. Pero, usa ka ka piece at ito nga puzzle. So, when you recognize your duties in life, you also recognize your place in life and the role you play in it. So, you are special when you have duties and responsibilities in life. In our part as a teacher, it's our duties to provide you a quality education from afar behind this um, pandemic we are facing right now. It, it's our duties to provide, still provide you a quality education. And it's our responsibility to finish making our virtual discussion and explain it well for you to understand our lesson. So, I hope from now on, be the small part of that whole picture.